the Australian landscape is so big and so vast that it's really best to be seen from the air. When you have this overview of the Australian landscape, it explains itself very well. And somehow it kind of complements this kind of strangeness. The, the landscape is not static, it's animistic. It's full of spirits, of life forces. Uh, it's metaphorical extension is, is truly remarkable and so in the case of the blue Murrumbidgee River it becomes a long long blue snake. The poet loves his garden. He's surrounded by his garden and I'm not using conventional perspective. He's loving the flower and enjoying the bouquet. But all this joy and all this juice that's coming from the flowers is running into him, even running there. And it begins with that flower there. And there's a friend over there. There he is. He says, I'm so happy for you. And so it's a state of grace moment and it's spring. And the poet says, nothing is so beautiful as spring. When weeds and wheels move long and lovely and lush, and thrushes' eggs are like low heavens. And I'm trying to get that kind of feeling of spring, the bursting of life, and all that joy and all that juice. In travelling through the Australian bush, and, and I stay at a station, this is some years ago, the station owner said, you'll be sleeping in the, in the shearer's quarters, you see. And I see this mattress. And it, it must have somehow become locked in my unconscious. And I don't know why it suddenly reappeared, reappeared. but the mattress, because it's, got a long history. Many shearers have slept there and it's like the Australian landscape. It just has a story to tell. There are two drovers and they've been in Western Queensland for months on end and they found themselves sleeping near each other but at times, shall I say, closer to each other. And they come to Birdsville, and this is the first time they've seen a bath for months. And the bath is old and rusty, and everything is scungy, but for them it's a paradise. And Bunny is saying to Pointer, come in, Pointer. It's wonderful in here. And Pointer says, I'm not sure whether I want to because I don't want people to think we're gay. I was encouraged to go with uh, the naturalist Vincent Cementi to see Lake Eyre when it was full of water. Now, I, I hasten to, to, to uh, explain this because Lake Eyre is the uh, lowest point in sea level in Australia. And that when the lake is empty, it's a, a vast salt lake. When you're approaching it by a light aircraft and you you're suddenly find yourself right at the end, you cannot see the land as a horizon. And so here we have the, the, there's still water in, in the lake, but it's turning that lovely crimson colour where the water's becoming salinated. Uh, at night, the, it, it's sort of caressed with a bowl of stars. 
I'm in Spain. And salami is called chorizo in Spain. But I suddenly find myself in Sicily. And it just seemed to me that the salamis become little universes. And everyone is just mad about these little universes. The dogs are running. The people are saying, I just want to be part of this little universe. You've got to be mad to do these sort of pictures. It's got, shall I say, a buzz about it, <laughs> which is completely different to the solemnity of the bed itself. Mm. It, it, it's got a feeling of being an archetype. The landscape horizon is very close to the bed in which that somehow the landscape is growing out of the bed or the bed is growing into the landscape. It, it's got a kind of a metaphorical stance about it. It's sort of, it's old, it's archaic. Uh, uh, it, it has memory about it. Somehow the memory factor is very important in, 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 in a work of art. Uh, 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 the, the idea of a thing being new can uh, quickly be translated into just fashion. It's full of the physical movement of the sea as it scuds along and the, the feeling and the different colorations of the sea as it gets closer and closer to the, to the beach. And it's an entirely different palette from the Australian landscapes. It's one painting that I'm able to see, say, it's delicious. <laughs> and it's got that kind of lulled sea surge. And the painting is attempting to get that kind of physicality of movement rather than nature's seen as a static thing. <laughs>